Okay, now in the last video, um, we talked about basically how to add files, stage them, and then how to commit them. And what we're gonna do in this file is just talk about kind of what happens after your first commit. So let's say we're working on our project now, and we've got this readme.md, and we want, we're editing it. And we're just sitting here making basic changes, right? Um, and then we can do things like nail too. Okay, so just, oops, I had the wrong thing on there. Um, okay, so we're just making some basic changes. And um, let's say we go ahead and do that. We save the file, so now the chain, we, you know, the file's different than what's currently in the project. And we can keep working on this. So let's say that we, now we run a get status but the files changed a little bit. Well, when we run git status now, you can see the git noticed that things have been modified in the file. So once again, we're still on the main branch. There's, um, these changes are not staged for commits. So these are files that basically are not being, so they're being tracked because we know we're tracking that file. Last time we saw untracked files because um, there were files that had never been in the repository before. Now what this is recognizing is that there's changes to the files that we've tracked, but we haven't staged any of these changes to be committed. So basically that file is still gonna exist how it was when we last saved it in our last commit. It's still gonna look like that even though there's changes on our local machine. So if we wanna now update these changes and put them into our repository, then we need to um, first of all stage them and then commit the changes so that then those changes are in the rep repository, okay? So let's go ahead and just show you that real quick as well. So we'll do git add readme.md and um, now if we run git status, you'll see that um, changes are ready to be committed. The modif modifications to this file are ready to be committed. Um, there's no other changes that are not being committed. So now if we run git commit like we did before, we're gonna say added email address to the readme. Okay, and that's our, our what we added. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. You can see that it added, it changed a file and um, edited it. And now if we run git status, everything should be good. There shouldn't be any changes to make. As you can see, git commit, nothing, uh, working directory is clean. Now I wanna show you a new trick here where you can see all the commits in line and that's called git log, easier to see. You can see here now that every single commit has a um, has a long number. This is a unique number that identifies that commit. You can see the name and the email address for that person. And you can also see the date that it was um, signed and then obviously that message. So now we know what happened in this commit. So this is the most recent commit where we added that email address. This is the commit we did before where we added the original readme file and um, all sorts of stuff like that. So the git log is really handy. It shows us all the commits that we've made in this project so far, okay? So that is how basically as you're working with the project, you're just gonna go about making changes as you normally would. Every time you make changes, you're gonna, the git is gonna automatically recognize those changes and you add the file back in, commit it, and now those changes are saved in the system. So it's good to kind of take snapshots of your versions. So for example, if you're working on a project, um, it's best to kind of like say, I'm gonna work on this feature today, okay, or part of, the, for this, this kind of part of today. You're gonna do um, one little item in your scrum or something like that. So it's best to work on that feature and then you commit after that feature. You don't need to commit every time you save, you make a small change. You wanna commit at like snapshots when the project's really good. So let's say you're working on, uh, working on the Laravel blog project, you're making a blog, and you start with making a new blog or sorry, a new tag. We're working on tagging for our blog post. So we're starting with the tag crud. Well, a good idea is not to like make the tag controller and then save it and then make the tag model and then save it and then make, you don't wanna go through and make it necessarily that small. What you're gonna wanna do is um, you can have lots of files in a same commit, not just one or two. So the best idea would be to kind of chunk it together. So take, you know, you make the controller, make the tag, make changes to the controller, add the create and edit and update functions. And then when you got kind of the tags in a good place, then you're gonna commit all of those files together into one commit and then the message will say that you added the tagging feature. Now let's say you need to go back and there's there a bug in there. You're gonna go, you fix the bug, change four or five files, whatever's needed, or maybe it's only one file, to fix that bug and then you're gonna commit the change that shows that that bug was fixed, okay? 
So you want to kind of do it in chunks like that that makes sense. And that way if, if when you fix that bug and you made that commit, if the only thing in that commit was the changes for that bug and that bug ends up causing more bugs, well now you can reverse that one change to how it was before that bug. If you make too big of commits and there's too many things happening inside of one commit, then it's harder to do that right there. So the best thing is kind of to do it in pieces and commit things in like chunks like that that make logical sense. So if you're doing a bug fix, do one bug fix usually is what I suggest. One bug fix or two bug fix if they kind of link together, commit that change. And in your message, you wanna say what, that that's what you did. That way later, if you need to go back and look at how that bug got fixed, you can go to that one commit, see all the files changed in that commit. You know that all that was involved with fixing that bug. That can be helpful. Or if that maybe you need to reverse that change later because that was causing problems, you just have to reverse one commit and um, you don't have all the other stuff mixed in there. It's only that one commit that really caused the problem. So that's what you can do, all right? So be thinking about that when you create your commits. You, just because you make one little file change doesn't mean you have to commit. I'm doing this mainly for demonstration purposes. I wanna move you now, guys, over to another project. And um, let's go ahead and just do that real quick. So I'm gonna clear out of here. I'm gonna CD back to my main folder. We're gonna go into our sites folder. And inside the sites folder, I'm gonna create a new Laravel project. So we're gonna do Laravel new, and we're gonna call it getting started project. Okay, so it's gonna craft this application, make it really quick, and there's gonna be hundreds or thousands of files inside of here. You can see all the dependencies that are being created. It's almost done now. Um, and there's just tons and tons of files being committed in here. So now we've got this brand new project. Let's go ahead and open into it. So um, I'm now inside the project, and if I do git status, first of all, it's not gonna say there's a repository because I haven't initialized it yet. So now it's initialized this project. And now run git status. Oops. And now you're gonna see that there's tons of files to commit. In fact, so many that it's just giving us folders because it's saying everything in this app folder needs to be added. So it's just gonna say add the app folder or the app folder is not being tracked. You know, nothing in bootstrap folder is being tracked, nothing in config folder. None of these files are being tracked, okay? And so it's gonna tell you that none of these are being tracked, so it's just gonna tell you that all of these need to be added. So now let's go ahead and add all of these. But how am I gonna add these? Because I don't wanna do like every single file. There's thousands of files. Well, there's lots of different options here. First of all, you can do things kind of like a re regular expression. So we could do things like dot txt, or sorry, what we can do is we can do like a asterisk to be like a wildcard, and then dot txt. And that will basically commit all the txt files in our project. Um, the other thing you can do is all the PHP files do kind of something similar. So star.php. Um, you can do things like that. So there's lots of things you can do to add um, in there, but the most common one is to just do a period. And the period means everything. So by doing git add period, it just says add everything that's not being tracked. And this is the most common way that will track new items is just git add period. And it will track, it'll add everything that's not currently being tracked into the staging area, and then we can usually commit it from there. So I'm gonna go do git add period. Of course, nothing happened. If we run our status again, we can see that there's all of these new files, okay? All these files are new files being tracked now, and if we wanted to commit those now, we would do something like this. It's standard usually when you start a new project, you can just do git initial commit. It added all these projects to our directory and now get status, we'll say nothing's new. And um, there we go, so now we have an entire project set up and um, you can just do that git add period, that's an easy way to do it. All right, so just to recap, I wanna show you guys that um, we learned in this video to do git log. Git log shows us a history of all the previous commits that we've made. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you wanna see all the other commits, you can just do git log and it shows you all the commits in there. And the other thing we learned was git add period. And period basically just allows us to add everything in the file, everything in the directory that's not being tracked and allows us to start tracking those files. Of course, you know git commit, which we used again, but these are kind of the new things we learned in this video. Okay, so the next video, we're gonna learn about a, new, a special file called git ignore, and we'll talk about how that helps you basically protect certain files from being stored in your repository that you don't wanna be tracked.